Hello. I'm trying to find my YouTube site here. <laughs> Is low, but he's stuck in Albany, so he's having on dinner. Aw, well, back. Hey, what's your single gals looking for trouble tonight? <laughs> there we go. Hey, Canadian witches. What's your single gals? I'm trying to get him in between the uh -huh. and the Mute. Okay, so who all do we have here? There's Dave Larson. Hello. Eli, hello. Canadian witches, hello. We're in that connection, honey. Hello. Canadian witches, would you care to come up and join me? You're more than welcome. We'll get started with the chat in a few minutes after some more people come in. Oops, I got to shut my TV off. Ah, copyright strike. How are y'all doing today? Oh, I'm going to drop myself down for a second. You got to check out my background. Look at this. Hey, breaking the silence. Hey, Joe. What do you think of my background? <laughs> That's good, Eli. No pain is always a good thing. If you can manage even half a day like that, you're doing pretty darn good. So, yeah, I went on. Oh, no, that one I found for a, another thing that I did, but I decided to use it for this. Show me two fingers. I know it's you, but just show me. Thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Not too bad. I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to get stuff done this morning, but... Me too. <laughs> went into town, did some stuff, came home. Got home and had an Am Amazon delivery for a Wi-Fi extender. I Tried got a delivery out the too. extender. <laughs> Good old Amazon. Tried out the extender yeah. and it won't even power on. Oh no. Okay, Joe. So, but then I called my my service provider. And they said they've never heard of anybody using those with any luck. And they've, both of the people I talked to there tried them. Hi, 320. Um, both of the people there tried them. And they said that they personally had not had any luck with any of the ones they had tried either. So. Wow. Yeah. What kind was it? Uh, it was like a Mecco brand or something I'd never heard of. Yeah. But you, you plug it into an outlet and then sync it up with your router. But right. I couldn't even get it to freaking power on. So mm -hmm. for those of I you that it. just came in, actually, there's only two people watching now. We just lost a bunch yeah. of people. But I'll start in a couple minutes. I'm waiting until we get a few more people in here. So I know that uh, I sent, like I told Julie that you were on. What's that? I told Julie that you were on. Oh, cool. Thank you. She got Hello, Carrie Ann. What's that? She got a new TV. Oh, cool. Yeah, her um, Hulu uh, streaming um, thing was not working on the TV she had. Like, it kept freezing all the time. And apparently, that make of or brand of TV, um, a lot of people are having issues with um, Hulu not working on it. 
Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hi, Just to me. buy another TV, I swear. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hi, Brittany well, I guess, Island. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, and then I guess we can repeat ourselves if we need to. But, um, hey, Eli. Um, so today, my best friend actually came up with the idea for this subject. Um, how the weather affects your mental health and ways you can deal with it, manage it, or just ways that you cope with it, you know, positive, negative, good or bad, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, because we all have coping mechanisms. They might be not so great to other people, but, yep. you know, if they help us, then, hey, whatever, you know. So, yep, um, I know for me, having chronic pain and a mental illness, I notice the weather in a huge way because it hits my body and that affects my mental state. Yeah. Um, yeah and most you people that I do. What's that? It hits you right like, like a ton of bricks too. You don't even get a warning. You don't get, you know, preparation. No. Yep. And even if you don't have chronic pain, weather can cause pain. And so, you know, we kind of, we, we know that pain is just kind of going to come along with weather, it seems. It's just the older you get, the more you feel it. Yeah. Um, but aside from pain, if we just focus on just the mental state, knowing that pain is probably a part of it. Um, breaking the silence says depression causes physical pain. Yes, it does. Um, it definitely does. But what does, what does the weather do to you guys mentally? There's a lot of, I mean, just the days that it's gray and overcast or snowing or raining, Especially, you know, we're in the middle of winter right now for those of us in the northern hemisphere. And you can't get away from the dreariness. What do you do to help yourself out of that ickiness, you know? Mm -hmm. What I know that my mom has is... Um, like because it's gray and there's overcast and there's fog and whatnot up here so we don't we lack the vitamin d so she either has to take more vitamin d yep or the doctor even uh told us that we can use those lamps oh yeah yeah yep i know I know that um, because I usually like my room dark because I'm just, I have sensitive, I'm sensitive to light. Uh -huh. um, but if the, the sun is not too bad, I will open my, my curtain and try and make it brighter yeah. so that your mood is a bit lifted. Because if you're in too much of a dark space, your mind tends to go into a dark space. Yep. I tend to try and make myself busy, you know, yeah. like reading, YouTube, yep. talking yep. to a friend that doesn't have a job. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, breaking the silence says sun makes you happier, cold makes you depressed. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. 320 says, it sucks my energy and depression tries to set in. Um, Eli says, he suffers in bed and cries. I've been there. Been there. Ken has to fight off depression. Every day. The silence says, all you can do is find good people to chat with and listen to happy music. Eli mm -hmm. waits for his pain to calm down and gets ice or meds. Uh, breaking the silence says, exercise helps, which is 
a huge one actually um even if you just go and, for a walk yeah just just a simple walk around the block can get your blood pumping get your heart going and and kind of just get you focusing on something other than what's in your head get you mm -hmm. kind of outside of yourself a little bit and if you have a pet or a couple pets that you can take on a walk with you and get you focusing on them makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, 320 says that she's a nurse and she's very well, well researched on this. Um, when she lived in Idaho, she was prone to sad. Got a, I'm saying she, and I'm really sorry. I just assumed a gender. Um, <laughs> 320 got very bad and found out they were very low on vitamin D. I, for years took vitamin D nonstop. And actually the next time I go to my doctor, which is next Tuesday, I'm gonna be asking about that again because I can tell I need it. Yeah. So um, 320 also says exercise and laughing, watch comedy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, 320, I got the gender right. <laughs> I, I make assumptions and then I go, ah, whoops. <laughs> so. I'm like, hi. <laughs> yep. And like Ken says, a walk around the block makes his bones hurt. Yep. I'm the same way. Just just yep. walking around our little tiny block, I get home and I'm winded and I hurt and I have to sit down for like an hour before I can even get up to go to the bathroom practically. Yep. Yep. And so, mm -hmm. but... Even if I get out and play with my dogs in the yard, that makes a difference in my day. Yeah. I may not be able to walk around the block, but I can go out and I can mess around mm -hmm. my, with my dogs, play fetch, get them all excited, and it gets me out of myself. So exactly, um, that makes a, a really big difference. Yes, huge. Ken was on vitamin D for several months, but we haven't gotten him back to the doctor to see if they need to refill his prescription or not. So, but, so. You know um, I'm, I'm also low on iron, so my energy is just. Oh yeah, that makes a big difference too. And with. Susan knows with uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. It's there like a like a disease that won't go away. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Any any kind of chronic pain just adds to something. Mm -hmm. Like that. Personal affective disorder, like 320 mentioned, and that's that's not something I've had to deal with personally but my best friend out in Washington dealt with it and he just I mean in the winter time it was all I could do to drag him out of his house to go out and have lunch once a week and the rest of the time he'd stay in his house and mope and yep. be depressed and sleep and you know so yeah it was it, it got pretty bad for a while until he finally started taking meds in the winter time and and that helped so hold on i gotta rein in my dogs yeah breaking the silence uh, there's so many medications out there that could not be right for you or yeah, I know it took me a long time to find the antidepressant that worked for me. It was trial and error, trial and error. I've been on a bunch of antidepressants, and I had an adverse reaction to every single one of them. And then they figured out that my kind of bipolar doesn't react well to typical antidepressants. And so they quit trying with the antidepressants and just stuck with the anti-seizure medication that seemed to yeah. control my bipolar so that's good 320 says the vitamin d needs to be in liquid form liquid caps or sprays not the type that is with calcium hmm. i had no idea about that 
Neither did I. Is there a reason for that? I'm wondering. I also have bad because... social anxiety too, breaking bad. Every time I have to go outside I, or like to a store or whatever, I have to take an anti anxiety pill or else I have a, an attack at the store because I can't deal with crowds. As long as I go to the store during like a non busy time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not answering that. Um, as long as I go to the store during a non-busy time, you know, like at 7 in the morning or yeah. something like that, and I don't have to deal with a lot of people, maybe just a few, then I can handle it. But if I find myself stuck at Walmart at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on food stamp day, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's very possible, breaking the silence. Um, your experience with people in your life will definitely shape how you react to them later on. Yep. 320 says the, um, the vitamin D with calcium, you will just literally poop it out because it is fat soluble. Hmm. So take your vitamin D with a fatty meal or a healthy oil. That's very good to know. I had I no idea. Not, yeah. I, I, in this world, in this day and age, Breaking Bad, it, they're breaking the silence. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to totally. It's, it is hard to trust people in this day and age. Right, that's sad in itself. Ken says being stuck at Walmart like that gets him angry because he hates stupid people. I agree. I know. Oh, my God. And they, they're always at Walmart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're like, why? <laughs> so what, what else does weather, how else does weather affect you guys? Um, I know I get headaches or migraines. Okay. Especially if, if, um. Because we get Chinooks, mm -hmm. where you probably, you guys probably do too because of the Rockies. We don't here in where, South Dakota, but I'm very familiar with them having lived in Western Washington. Yeah. So, like, it's nice and everything that we get the warmer weather, but, man, it just hits you like a ton of bricks. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Gaffa. Welcome. Hey, Gaffa. Breaking the silence of sinus and allergies. That is definitely something that can affect you mentally. Um, oh, yeah. I have chronic sinus problems. I've had three sinus surgeries. When my sinuses hurt, I can't do anything. I am, mm -hmm. it, it hurts. So I'm like down because I'm in pain, but it lasts for so long. It just, I get freaking depressed from being in pain. And when it's pain, like right there, you can't think about anything else. Mm -hmm. So, and you can't breathe and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah the pain affects your mood. Definitely. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Eli says it's hard to do things out in public and I hurt bad and ju you just try to do your best to survive. Yep. yep. That's, that is definitely true. Ken says he thinks they breathe in the Walmart bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a conspiracy, man. Thanks, Christy. I appreciate it. So, we kind of have an idea. I mean, we all pretty much know what the weather does to us. I mean, we all live with, with ourselves, so we kind of know... Um, what are things that you have found that really help you? Like if you're just fighting it real bad, is there anything that you can do that really picks up your mood? Um, I mean, I know for me, like the other day, my best friend called me and I was just sitting at home just like, eh, I don't want to mm -hmm. do anything. I don't want to go anywhere. I feel like crap. 
And she called me and she's like, come go out to breakfast with me. And I almost said no. And I'm like, you know, I don't see her very often, at least not as often as I'd like to. Mm -hmm. You know, just take advantage of it. We went and spent three hours at Perkins just sitting there gabbing mm -hmm. and not talking about anything serious, just spending time. I came home and I was in such a much better mood wow. because I wasn't thinking about myself, you know, yeah. I was just spending time with a friend. So that really just instantly picked me up. Yeah. I see it helps me too. Yes. 320. Go right ahead. Um, Lisa. Hi, well, Lisa. Lisa says for her, it's her kid. Carrie says talking to good people helps. Um, yeah, understanding friends are a must. Yeah. Hey, Rogue. Welcome. Breaking the silence says making yourself go out helps a lot. Yep, it really does. Um, also, she, he's breaking the silence says being around people who uplift you. 320 says understanding friends are a must. Um, 320 says, okay, the, whoops, hang on. It's hidden for a second. Okay. The best thing to do if stuck indoors is sex. If you like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's why many babies are born in the summer. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, and Ken says, hooking up with the YouTube family. And I have definitely found that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 320. I, it has been proven. I mean, mm -hmm. it definitely has been proven. I, I, I agree with you. So, but I, I definitely agree with Ken. The, the YouTube family has just become an invaluable yep. resource for me. Yep. So. Chocolate, yeah. Chocolate releases endorphins, yep. Gaffa's right, too. Uh, until the money runs out, it is depressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm going <laughs> through right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ken, thanks for stopping in. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. That's awesome, Breaking the Silence. Breaking the Silence says YouTube saved their life, so. Yep, me too. It's it's gotten me out of my hole that I was stuck in and got me back into communicating with people and yeah. being more outgoing and, you know. Almost to, back to my old self almost because yeah. right when I found you two, you guys, and it was like through other people like Fallen and Ghost Dog and yeah, and... I had lost my stepmom a month prior. Mm. And then I found you guys a month later and just streaming and just connecting with everybody. And it's like that really like saved me too. Right on. It really did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Breaking the silence, of, especially when the people on YouTube are nicer and more understanding than people in real life. Oh, yeah. Right? It's messed up. And Gaffa, Gaffa says, YouTube saved my sanity. Watching preschool television day in, day out was sending me around the bend. <laughs> <laughs> 320 says, if you're not already on depression meds, try taking tryptophan in pill form. It is an antidepressant that has been working well. I didn't know. I mean, I I know what tryptophan is. I guess I didn't know it was offered as an actual medication. I thought it was just the stuff in Turkey that makes you sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that causes the turkey coma. Lisa says that her bashful and Skeeter started Ladies and Gentlemen of the Roundtable channel because they were in their lives at the time and it helped them so much. And the channel and family just kept growing and helping each other. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way the rednecks are and the people associated around us. It's 
And it's just getting to be a bigger and bigger group of people that interacts with each other. I just, I love it. I love it too. Yeah. I will check into that 320. That might be an option for me. Because it's not a, mm -hmm. a drug that's going right. to mess up your head while it's trying to make it better. Right. You know, it's a little more natural. Yeah. Like, um, oh, what's that? Uh, what's the stuff for sleep? Um, um, I went blank. Melatonin. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I've never tried it, but my stepdaughter was on it for probably 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it made a huge difference for her when she was younger. Yeah. Um, my nephew, my best friend's son, he um, has to take it uh, before bed. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't make enough. Because he was staying up till like 12 o'clock and we're like, uh, you know. Yeah. Especially mom is like, go to bed. Yeah. So an another thing that I have found, um, and I, I talked about a little bit before, but something that helped me almost right away um Sure thing, Nick, you can have all my trolls today. <laughs> um, Gaffa says the stuff for sleep is the news. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Sleep is something that if I'm really down, just having one of those days where I just don't give a shit and I don't want to deal with anything, I take a nap. Mm -hmm. I just give into it, let yeah. my body do what it needs to do, and I wake up an hour or two later and I'm ready to get some stuff done. It might not be a lot, but it's better than what I was feeling before. Yeah. And, and sleeping at night, having a regular pattern of sleep and getting enough sleep is very, very important for anybody, but especially if you're dealing with a mental illness yeah. or chronic pain or, you know, anything that puts you out of whack. So, yeah. Yeah, blue yeah. light from electronics really affects sleep patterns, melatonin, oh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yep, 320, we heal while we sleep. And that's not just from owies and, mm -hmm. you know, boo-boos. It's all of us. Our whole body heals while we sleep. Yep. Yep, Lisa, you've got little kids and a baby and all that kind of stuff. It's... It took me years after my kids were older for me to start sleeping in a normal pattern again. Mm -hmm. And even now, if I don't, if I'm not right on top of taking my meds when I'm supposed to and how much I'm supposed to, and if I'm not eating properly and all that kind of stuff, then I don't get enough sleep either because my body just doesn't function right. <laughs> Yep, yeah, and then you've got Ken who yeah. stays up at 7 a.m. and has to be up by, you know, at the latest about 1 o'clock p.m. So, because <laughs> he goes to work hours. at 2. Yeah, his work hours are all backwards. Yep. But I've worked those shifts, so. Yep. <laughs> and you touched on it, um, a good diet. Yes. Will will help your mental state. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. How I've, good food will help. It's 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 well it's you gotta look at food like fuel for your car. Yeah. You wouldn't go to the gas station like okay, for example, Ken's blazer has to have non ethanol gas. Mm hmm and if it doesn't have non-ethanol gas, it will eventually start running very poorly. The seals will break down. It just, the ethanol eats away at the parts of the car. And so if we feed it the wrong fuel, mm -hmm. if we feed it junk, like the cheapest gas we can find, just because it's cheap and it fills the car up, the car will eventually break down. Mm -hmm. So That's we true. have to actually yep. spend the money and get the expensive stuff and the car stays running well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like me. I've 
I found myself going for the easiest stuff I can find lately, even if it's just a handful of chips. Mm -hmm. And it might fill me up for 20 minutes, but a half hour later, I'm hungry again. Yep. And I might not feel the greatest. And it didn't do anything for me. And then I go to the scale the next day and I've added a pound. So I actually mm -hmm. just started a program called Noom, which oh, is totally. um, yeah. get, get two weeks free on it. And it's like a free trial. And I'm going to cancel after the free trial, but you can still stay on the program. You just don't get the um, the one on one coaching. So, but it's still, you're still, you, know, you can still yeah. do the other stuff in the program. And one of the things you do is log your food. Mm -hmm. And I have found that by logging my food, I'm actually going, wait a minute, I don't want to put that in my body. Because number yeah, one, I have to log it and I'm accountable to somebody else for it. Mm -hmm. And if I just stuff my face with all this junk food, my coach is going to get a hold of me and go, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Makes you pay attention. Yeah, it really does. And, uh, 320, you're right when it's drier out outside oh when it's dry uh, outside is when you need the colorful veggies and the fruits the visual yeah just that does visual. make a lot of sense yep. and like rafa says what you eat and Julie. when you eat it is also important for good sleep too yeah hey, Julie. Healthy fats fill you up and take longer to digest, keeping you full longer. Um, 320 says she has to be careful. She will eat out of boredom. That's me. Yep. So she does not have any convenience foods anymore. Yep. And that's what I need to do is quit with the convenience foods. Um, for example, tonight, Ken is going to come home and the house will smell wonderful. And there will be venison and a little bit of beef in the crock pot with a bunch of other stuff so nice which crock pot food is so easy to make i don't know why i don't do it more often but I know. yeah i see you there <laughs> oh gaffa has an interesting point um when it's dreary outside is when you should eat colorful foods and fruits they're out of season Problem with society is we farm food. Well, Sorry you have to, to explain break in, Susan. I, I didn't didn't mean to. I wasn't going to come up today, but I did want to have to type so much. <laughs> I I believe that we should go back to seasonal fruits. If it's not in season in your area, don't eat it because that's just mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. your whole body balance out. We farm too much. We we ship shit from one side of the country to the other. So when it's out of season on one side, ah, it doesn't matter. Would you get it from the other side? And the body isn't used to out of seasonal food. If it's not in season, your body's already starting to say, right, we're going into the colder months. We should be eating more, you know, this, that, and everything else. And the fact that we farm and store things so much, our body doesn't know what season it's supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing. And it, it does. It puts. It does affect our mentality and our chemical balance so much. That's my opinion. Yeah, I makes a lot of sense. I, I definitely agree. I think our bodies just from like a, I'm trying to think of what the word is, um, like a genetic memory. Mm -hmm. We know what to eat during what season just from that genetic memory, I think. And, yeah, but and, it's not only that. Our body, I think our body needs to go through the same cycle that the world does. It's, we're yeah. supposed to slow down what we're supposed mm -hmm. to we're actually supposed to run out of food by the end of winter we're actually supposed to almost starve ourselves stupid by the end of winter and that's when we get an abundance of fruit and vegetables and and the game starts coming back and you go back out and you heat and you, uh, you hunt and you gather and you collect it all back up and you store food right up until the beginning of winter and then you deplete those stores through winter unfortunately in society these days because we farm and because we store and because we've got refrigerators and because stores are constantly got food coming in and out and they want to sell you all the best stuff and they import it from over we just don't do the seasonal stuff anymore and our body just never knows what we're supposed to do so and then we go and say oh we've got drugs we can fix that mm -hmm. that's the that's... answer to the problem the other answer to the problem is when there's an issue instead of looking at 
uh, nutritional value or, or or what's going on around them. They go, oh, we'll, we'll just give them drugs. We know this drug fixes that problem, so we'll just. And then people end up start getting dependent on things that they shouldn't get dependent on. Yep. Mhm. Yeah, Julie, grapes are good. Yeah. I um. A psychologist said a while back, um, don't get your kids to avoid stressful situations because it teaches them to deal with stressful situations. It teaches them yeah. the difference between not everything's always good. If your kid grows yeah. up with a perfect, uneventful, stress, stress-free stress life, when they do have to deal with it, they don't know how to handle it. They don't mm-hmm. know what to do with it. And that's when we have problems in society developing we shouldn't, shouldn't be having. So yep. they, then, then they don't have... Um, the the experience and the the actions to deal with things when things just get too much for them, and then people start crawling into their cocoon and start avoiding people, and then they've got other things coming along, and then you look at diets, the amount of preservatives and food and stuff like that. That seems to upset the balance of of the chemicals that we've got in our body. Our body is a well tuned machine, and we don't treat it as well as we could do. Yep. Mm. 320 says food can be the drug though and I food can be a drug good or bad food can be really unhealthy for you and it can be addictive and like a negative drug or food can be healthy and healing if eaten in the right amounts and in the right way so yeah, but, uh, you, you notice I mean I don't know if anyone wants to do the experiments but I notice it myself the more fresher food you eat less processed the more balanced your body seem, your body and your life seems to come, because mm-hmm. your your body knows how to say, "No, I've had enough of that. I don't want that anymore." Mm-hmm. It tells you, "No, I don't feel like a peach, or I don't feel like eating apples, or I don't feel like, uh, you know, a, a glass of water and everything else." It tells you what it needs and when it doesn't need. Cravings are, um, in my opinion, a a development of processed food. Yeah. Because you get everything. Because processed food is meant to taste nice. You're not meant to say mm-hmm. that's, that's yucky. When it, if, if, if you're saying that a processed food is yucky, then they've done their job wrong because you're not going to buy it again. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you've got processed food catering to your every desire and need within your body makes your body go, what the hell? I say it to mm-hmm. people all the time. Um, uh, sweetener substitutes. Artificial mm-hmm. sweeteners and all that stuff, diet cokes and all that kind of stuff, are not good for your body for the one reason, one reason only. Your body is geared to deal with sugar. Whether or not it stores the sugar as fat or whether it burns the sugar off, it's geared to, to work with sugar. So if you put sugar in your mouth, your mouth reacts to the sweetness and says, right, body, sugar's coming, start preparing for it, and then you'll end up with um, insulin and and all the stuff that learn learns to deal with sugar if your body requires it it burns it off real quick if it doesn't it'll store it away for fat yeah. if you put artificial sweetener in all you're doing is t- uh, teasing your brain your mouth gets the sweetness your body goes here comes the sugar and then all of a sudden nothing turns up and eventually the brain goes it's just sweet stuff we don't need to worry about that and your body stops reacting to it so when you do actually eat genuinely sweet stuff that's got genuine sugar in it your body doesn't know what to do with it because hold on says it's sweet but we don't normally get sweet so why is it and then it just it confuses the crap out of it and processed mm-hmm. food irritates that Pro- processed food's there to give you the pleasure of food without actually the benefit of it mm-hmm. that's a good way to say it that mm-hmm. really is a good way to say it actually home said i disagree cravings are not the way of your body saying you are depleted in something the uh, cravings are generated by a lot of other things as well emotion um yeah. depression a lot of things people you notice that women have been said to crave chocolate when they're depressed that's mm-hmm. not because they need chocolate and sugar it's because they need the feel good feeling of what chocolate gives to them um because of the chemical reaction that it does in your body and uh, fast food and processed food companies have learnt that. They've, they've sent, spent so much money on the science of how to make people eat their food, and they've learnt the psychological and the chemical things that, that react and how that they can trigger those for the body to say, this is a good thing for me, I need to eat this, and it's never ever good for you. 
fruit has one of those things in it fruit and vegetable they have a balance of the right chemicals that irritate your body to the stage where the body goes i need that i require that and i i, I crave those things but when you do processed food and it has all those perfection things in it your body's just going to go it's like he, here's the biggest the biggest and the worst thing that is ever invented for fast food craving it's potatoes mm -hmm. potatoes are full of starch which give you energy but then they give you flavors mm -hmm. and when you're a kid um you get the pleasure from eating uh chips because they're a treat uh because they're in part of the atmosphere <coughs> it's because something you don't have every day and when you grow up that memory of of the enjoyment of what you were doing when you were eating chips every time you eat chips brings back that memory but then if they enhance the potato chip in such a way that it also stimulates the same chemicals you get when you're enjoying it you will associate mm -hmm. chips with those good parts of your life so you'll eat them to make you feel better and in the end you get fat and then you get depressed because you're fat and then you can't do anything about it because the only thing that's making you feel good is making you fat and it's a cycle and once you get on the diet cycle and i i use the word diet very 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 cautiously because people think diet is to control bad food and it's not diet is a, pres a prescribed consumption of food a healthy diet which is why you hear that term a lot isn't a bad diet mm -hmm. an unhealthy diet is a bad diet diet in general is everything you eat every day on a regular basis without any issues yep that came yep. right that's right. That's the reason why the majority of um, the population of fat people are poor because the cheapest yep. food is the worst food you can get. But then yep. you notice people who have money are also fat because they have an abundance of food. And unfortunately, yep. foods are designed to make you feel better. You're not mm -hmm. meant to always feel better. You're meant to feel satisfied when you eat food you're supposed to feel better when you interact with other people and the problem in this society is the most interaction we get is hi folks there you go <laughs> we don't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction unless we've got a camera in our front of, in front of our face most of the time these days and society is doing exactly what susan and i like to do which is stay at home and not interact with the world if we don't don't need to because there's too many hard bits in the world that have caused us emotional trauma in the past that we just well i don't want to go out and have to face that it's just something i don't want to deal with today i'd rather sit at home and look at my tv and talk to people and then when i've had enough of it, i can turn them off and they'll go away you can't do that in society when when you had enough of people you have to use manners and and politeness and respect and and try and get yourself out of a situation that's too bloody hard and I'm, damn i just want to turn the tv off so much easier to turn the tv off yeah yeah Lisa, I, my, my best friend in Washington was very close to eating himself to death. And at one point, I actually just looked at him and said, I can't be around you anymore until you do something about this because I don't want to watch you die. Yeah. yeah, and, and um, it's, it's hard to do that. It is so hard to do that, to just walk away from somebody who needs your oh, friendship yeah. and help. But yeah. is the fast food industry being held accountable for this? Is the processed food industry held, being accountable? And the most important one is the sugar industry being made aware of it. It's like nope. the tobacco industry back in the 50s. Everybody yeah. thought there might be something wrong with it. The tobacco industry knew darn well there was something wrong with it, but they yep. weren't going to tell anybody until... The, the doctors come out and said yeah this is definitely causing people cancer one way or another and now it's an issue are they going to do that 50 60 years in time saying hold on it's sugar that's causing everybody's yeah. cancer and and issues i know of stories of people who have gone on um a, a vegetarian diet and half the symptoms that they were suffering with that were attributed to um, autoimmune disease and it disappeared because they weren't filling themselves for all that process stuff that was irritating their body to the stage where a body was trying to fight it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Lisa, you are doing such an awesome job. I have to say this. You are so conscientious about taking yeah. the right care of your kids and 
raising them the right way and making sure they're not screwed up and all that kind of stuff, make sure you are taking care of you properly. Because without yeah. you being properly taken care of, you're not going to be able to properly take care of them. But you are doing an awesome exactly. job, and I want you to know that. It, it's, um, it's not only that, Lisa. Be very aware. And it's the one thing I'm, I'm noticing is very, very true when it comes to kids. How you deal with stuff and how you react to stuff uh, based on your history is teaching the kids that's how you should deal with stuff. So if you want your kids to grow up with a positive uh, outlook that doesn't turn into shit in, in their adult life, you need to be able to um, keep that away from your kids when you're dealing with it so that they think the proper way to deal with things is the way you want them to deal with things. If you're seeing you, them, if they're seeing you go through depression and seeing you uh, have negative reaction to a lot of things that you're going on with, they're going to think that's the way it's supposed to be. And it's very hard uh, to bring your kids up um, without that. And that's the downfall about certain things. But the one thing I have learnt about having kids and now my, new, my youngest daughter, talking to your kids and telling your kids, uh, in, in, even if just explaining them to exactly what's going on so they don't have to guess and and come up with their own conclusion makes it so much easier for kids to learn to deal with things in the long way yeah 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 honesty is even if it's really simple honesty with a little mm -hmm. kid honesty is always the best policy i think mm -hmm. it just you like gaffa said then they don't have to guess because when little kids guess their imaginations run wild and and the there's hell things, Lisa's daughter is doing exactly what every person does in that time of their life when things go horribly wrong for them. They're looking for comfort some way or other. And food is a comfort thing. Junk food is designed to make you feel happy and comfortable. And if kids are leaning on, on junk food and stuff like that, they're going to get they're going to run out of either happiness and start having to look for something that's going to give them a little bit more happy, whereas drugs start coming in. Yeah. Yep. Um, also, Lisa, just talking to your daughter about how she feels. I mean, my daughter has a bad habit of chewing her clothes. Mm. Um, we thought it was uh, a little bit anxiety because, you know, sometimes we've got shit we've got to deal with and it's very hard to not deal with it in front of your daughter because it's, it's sometimes a reaction. It turns out it's not her handling things negatively that's the reason she chews her clothes. It's because she's friggin' hungry. Mm -hmm. and she doesn't, know, she doesn't know how to tell you that she's hungry because we try to maintain a meal time regime so she doesn't eat more than she needs to but now yep. we're just going look if you're hungry tell us we'll give you something that's healthy for you that's a quick snack we, we keep lots of things in the house that are just healthy and a quick snack um, yep. the other problem we're having with her at the moment which is bothering me she, when she gets a bit stressed she grinds her teeth so when we hear that, we know that she's stressing about something and that's when I will sit down and talk to her and say, look, you can't grind your teeth for one thing because your teeth are just going to end up wearing out and not being very good and it's something you've got to, we've got to deal with. But what do you need to talk to me about? What is it you need to, to, to bring out? I'm listening. It's time for you to tell me what's going on and then I try and find out by asking her questions what it is that's bothering her. And we, we find out that most of the time it's because... Uh, the wife and I are not handling things as well as we should and we need to handle it a little bit better in front of our daughter so she can get get the idea that it's such a negative thing to have a, a grown-up life. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. not easy. Speaking yeah. of which... Um, I wanted hey, to, princess. I wanted to touch on... Mm -hmm. uh, 320 said, in the long run, it's very expensive when you have chronic illness. When you eat the right foods, you don't eat as much and your body is I'll, satisfied. I'll send, I'll Absolutely send true. Children. But if a person is addicted, whether it be emotional or mental, the tendency is to eat anyways. I used to be like that. And then I flipped around and to gain control, I quit eating. And when I was the most hungry, I would absolutely stay away from food for like three, four days at a time. Oh. Felt like I had control. And I'll, 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 give, you a tip. I'll give you a tip, folks. If you're hungry because you're stressing and not because you actually haven't had your, if you've just had lunch and you're still starving, hungry, and and you're, you know your stomach's full, but you still got that hunger feeling, drink water. 
absolutely yep. drink water. The water alone will flush your system and give you something to do. Every time you're yep. hungry, just sip on water and you'll be surprised how quick that'll fix it. Yep. Oh, and the other thing I'll tell you, um, sugar is a short burn fuse. It'll, once your body burns the, the sugar you've got, it'll want more sugar. <clears throat> to stop that from happening, uh, eat protein because protein stops the insulin uh, and cravings effect. So if you uh, yeah. say eat a boiled egg when you're hungry, you'll be surprised how much longer you won't be hungry mm -hmm. for, yep. for, because of that period because protein stops your hunger and sugar increases your hunger. Yep. Yep. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> hey, Lisa. <clears throat> hey. <laughs> kind of went from What's weather this? to food, but hey. it's a good conversation to have mm -hmm. um, because food is so important to being alive. You have to eat. You don't have to eat healthy, but as we're discussing, all right, 320, thank you for coming in. I appreciate your input. It's been really good. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, as we've been discussing, the healthier you eat, the better you're going to feel. The better you feel physically, the better you're going to feel mentally. And if you, you know, you're in the middle of winter, at least we are here in the Northern Hemisphere, middle of winter, miserable cold, you feel like crap, you go to the cupboard or the fridge. If the first thing you pull out is potato chips every single yeah. time, you're never gonna feel better. Mm -hmm. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. If you go there and skip over the chips, go for an apple, a bowl of oatmeal, um, you know, it's, it's not only that if, 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 if you get it, drink water, if you, if you eat food with high water content, you will feel full longer and you will actually gain a lot less weight. Even if you're eating something a little less good for you, if it's got more water, I mean, oatmeal is awesome for you. It's also high water content. And so cost. And what? Low cost. Yeah, low cost. Very low cost. <laughs> See, that's that's the other problem is too. Nancy's pointed out very, very clearly. Depending on where you live is depending on how healthy you can eat. Mm -hmm. It's it's unaffordable to eat fresh and fruit and vegetables in a place that just does not supply fresh fruit and vegetables and has to ship it in. Yeah. Um, well, and what, but then what, there's the other then there's the other alternative. When fresh fruit and vegetables are in season and and full, um, a plentiful, which is in the the spring and summer months make frozen dinners that you can bring out in the winter months make soups make stews make those yes. things that you, that you can put into small containers that when you've in winter if you want to feel better you just bring those out believe it or not reheating food in the winter of months especially in america um is is a standard thing that we've done for eons and generations and everything else and our body is geared to to uh, eating stored food um, so if you make soups and stews and, and uh, casseroles and, and all those things that you can freeze, you can actually uh, change the way your body feels in the dreary months because uh, because um, your body knows it's winter, there knows that is. warming food and food that are meant to, to warm you up is what you should be eating instead of fresh fruit which is hold on that's meant to be in spring and summer according to your body and your body goes damn it's not spring and sunny because outside is dreary wet and cold why am i eating mm -hmm. summer type food well, nancy says i can't i can't afford to eat healthy when i'm home food is too expensive it's cheaper to buy cheap food that's not mm -hmm. all that good for you and when she, she says when she's home she only eats once a day yeah, i that's... Totally get that when i lived out in seattle it was insane how expensive food was. The only reason I ate produce at all was because my boyfriend worked at a produce warehouse and got it free. But, and, and what's crazy is Nancy lives three hours away from hundreds of orchards. Mm -hmm. And she pays premium price for fruits and vegetables. When she that's should because, actually that, be eating it cheaper that, than anybody else. That's because the, 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 those kind of places that depend on exports. 
they tend to yep. get it away from where they actually grow it as, mm -hmm. as far as possible because that's where the money is. And yep. if they want the people close to them to have the product, well, you're going to pay the money that we, we get it over there because why would we sell it to you if we're not going to get the same money? And that's the problem with, with Do they ever products. have like farmers markets? Oh yeah, yeah they have all the food. Market. All the oh, food yeah. is expensive because of the fact that so a Seattle has to go outside Seattle for their produce. And mm -hmm. outside Seattle, everything is premium and sent to to export. So the exporters yep, want the premium too. price they get from export. So they're going to charge the Seattle uh, residents the same money that they charge the exporters. Because, hey, we can get it over mm -hmm. there. Why would we sell it to you cheaper? If you, yeah. if you want it cheap in Washington, you have to go to eastern Washington and basically go to an orchard or go to you know a couple orchards that have the produce that you want and pick it yourself and, and then it's, it's it's not you can't go buy a bag like you can at the fruit and veg you got to go buy like a, a box of the stuff which will take you three four weeks to eat if you know what i mean or so you process it yep, yep. lisa are we having sex or are you staying on the panel <laughs> my internet keeps coming kind of on my together damn girl, you, you're in and out like, like, like you're having sex here you know right? Well, if I could say anything, um, coming from someone, I'm in the process of losing weight, and I've lost 120 pounds now. And the best thing you can do is if if you can't eat healthy for you know reasons, you know if you can't afford it or whatever, at least the best thing you can do is what you do have. Try to break it up into three times a day and not just eat one meal a day because that just screws yeah. with your metabolism yeah, so much and then drink water drink right. water that right. helps your metabolism actually, a actually, lot actually i think if if you can't afford to eat uh three times a day and even if you can order afford to eat two small meals a day try and stretch it out to six Make yeah. It six yeah. Snakes, whatever, but meals. don't as do once a day. Is eating, what I'm saying. Yeah, as long as yeah. you're constantly eating, your body won't go into storage mode. Right. It's got a, a, yeah. A, a, a if it goes into going. starvation mode, that's like the worst thing, because your body yeah. just the metabolism just grinds to a halt, and that's yep. that's the worst thing you can do. And, and in that's, this case, it's even worse for her because she. She has limited mobility. Yeah. She ain't burning yep. off the fuel as quick as she should, and it's already going into starvation mode, and then mm. she's not burning it off. So it's just going to go into physical issues that she shouldn't deal with. And I was yeah. going to tell Nancy too. I don't know how. I don't know about her. Like I don't know much about her, but even if she could do like like you know like arm movements at all, whenever. I didn't know she was able to do that, but Nancy has got a lot of health issues that restrict yeah. her from doing too much. Most of her health issues at the moment, though, is because she is not eating healthy. Okay. Which is one of the reasons well, why we're trying to get her to move to the southern area where food's a lot cheaper, the the weather's a lot more indicative to her health, and she'll improve. She's already proven to us that being where she is on holidays is beneficial that she can get yeah. uh, what she can buy in seattle uh for the cost of an apple she can buy a bag of apples yeah yep. right you know what i mean so that's improved her in that way because she doesn't have to eat a bag of apples but she could actually get more out of her money if she went to live in louisiana or, or somewhere like that. right the weather alone is helping her it's allowing her to breathe it's allowing all the issues that she has in seattle to go away uh which is a positive thing in the end uh, yeah but being as she's confined to a wheelchair uh, she has at least two different types of cancer, um, and she has lung and heart issues. It's very hard for her to burn off. Yeah, her, it makes it. As it yeah. So she has to be very, very careful about her diet to ensure that she yeah. doesn't cause anything. Yeah, and I understand that, Nancy. I was confined to a wheelchair for two years, and I gained a bunch of weight. That's why I'm losing weight now. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand that it's really hard. Because you just you can't move, and then it's it's the whole cycle. It's, it, it is. It, it is. It's it like, so much easier. Because then, you know, then that starts the mental uh, health issues. You yeah, know? and then the stress of it, and then it makes you just want to eat more, and it's so hard. Mm -hmm. 
it's really this, difficult. This program that, that I'm doing now, um, it it reminds me to log my food, and I, I'm getting annoyed with it because, like, every <laughs> hour, it's like, okay, it's time for breakfast. Okay, it's time for snack. Okay, I'm like, I just friggin' ate twice, and you want me to eat again? Holy mm. crap! So I'm just I'm eating really small amounts, but I'm eating like every two hours, yeah. and so I'm breaking up what I would normally eat at night into like all day. Yeah, that's good though. And that's kind of good. Yeah. Up. yeah, that's my friend that's been doing it for a while. Um, she's been on it for like a month, and she's lost like thirteen or fourteen pounds. And um, yeah. she said that it really made a difference in her energy just breaking up the food that she ate into like six small meals mm -hmm. it, it started her metabolism she started having more energy and the weight is just falling off of her just by changing her eating habits yeah well, like weight watchers so, we have apps um like on our phone and it's kind of the same thing like you record what you eat um mm -hmm. and it figures out like it's a point system, but it figures it all out and they have uh, like recipes and you can build recipes and it'll, it's just, it's kind of a similar thing and it's, it's wonderful. You know, it's, it helps you throughout the day and it, it keeps track yeah. of things for you and it's, yeah. it, it really helps. I mean, I, without it, it'd be really hard for me. Yeah. So. Um, Susan, um, I'd yep. love to stay and have this conversation for so many reasons, mm. but my little one's awake now. I have to feed her. She is the priority. Mm. Yep. So She's I'm, cute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to head off. Um, She's adorable, anyway. by the way. Hi, <laughs> Gaffer. Apparently, she wants to have uh, smashed eggs for breakfast. Oh. Right on. Nice. Well, thanks for coming up and and yeah. talking with us. I appreciate your input. Was very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Oh. I appreciate having you on, having me on the panel. Hi. <laughs> you be <laughs> <laughs> And Coppola Junction, you're um, you're absolutely right. Um, mental health is all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Yep. Well, Good. we've we've been going for about an hour now, and we've had a couple of really good topics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this stream and leave this as about an hour-long stream for people to come back and watch. But I'm going to um, – so I'm going to end this, and then I'll jump back in and start a new stream if anybody wants to come back in and just keep chatting on this or – BS about other yeah. stuff, um, and I'll just send some links out to anybody that wants them. So, okay, okay, me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So, anybody that wants to come back, um, I'll uh, see you in a few minutes. I'm just gonna shut this down and start a new one back up again. Okay, so thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for taking part. I appreciate it. We'll Bye. see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.